Welcome to Pogue Park. Ground was broken here in 2015 to transform the old Hood Park into Pogue Park. It looks like I'm finally being remembered here in my hometown. I'm George Coleman Pogue. I was born on November 6th, 1880 in Hannibal, Missouri. My parents, James and Anna Pogue, were born into slavery, but were freed by the Civil War. Mom, though, was proud of her freedom papers, which means she was freed before 1861. I spent most of my childhood here in La Crosse. We moved here in 1884. My father worked as a coachman for Mr. A.W. Pettibone. My mother was a cook and domestic in their house, which is on the corner of 8th and King Streets. I was three and a half at the time. My sister, Lulu Bell, was 17. My other sister, Nellie, was six. Soon after we moved here, Lulu Bell married John J. Johnson, a coachman for Mr. Jason Easton. They soon had a son. His name was Freddie. Things changed, though. Lulu Bell and her little boy later moved back in with our family, and we all lived on the Pettibone estate. Then, in 1887, Lulu Bell died. The next year, in 1888, my father died of tuberculosis. Just before my eighth birthday, my little nephew, Freddie, died of diphtheria. That left my mother, my sister Nellie, and me. Fortunately, mother was a good worker, so she was employed as a cook and then a stewardess for the two mansions on the Easton estate on Cat Street. The Eastons were very supportive. Mr. Easton owned a stable of racehorses and he taught me to ride. I love to ride fast, and I love to run. My mother firmly believed that an education would lift us above the crowd. The Eastons encouraged us to use their library for our studies. Nellie and I became the second and third black students at La Crosse High School. I love the library because I love to read. I was in the ancient classical course in high school. I studied a variety of courses for college. I worked hard and studied hard and graduated as salutatorian in my class in 1899. My academics, though, are not what got the city of La Crosse to name that park after me. It was my athletic gifts that brought this belated honor. I love to run. I was fast. So I became part of La Crosse High School's track team. In a meet against Winona, I won the 50-yard dash with a new Wisconsin state record, and the 100-yard dash, and the 220-yard dash. Then I took off my track shoes to win second place in the standing broad jump. I had the crowd cheering for me. Newspapers said I was probably the greatest athlete in this city. My athletic gifts are also what got me into the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I joined the Public Speaking Society, the Literary Society, and had great success on the track team. I was the first black athlete to compete for the Badgers and the first to be a Big Ten champion. My coaches, teammates, and the spectators all respected and admired me. Once when the coach got called out of town, he asked me to take over the team. 1904 was the most groundbreaking year of all. It was the year of the third modern Olympiad. They were held in St. Louis and on August 31st, I, George Coleman Pogue, won a bronze medal in the 400 meter hurdles. Can you imagine that? And the next day, I won a second bronze in the 200 meter hurdles. Pretty impressive when you think about it. It was quite an achievement. By this time, my sister Nellie was teaching in East St. Louis. Our mother had joined her there. I also moved to the St. Louis area and eventually took a job at Sumner High School, the only all-black high school west of the Mississippi. I taught English and Latin there for nine years. Eventually, I ended up in Chicago and chose to take a job as a postal clerk in Chicago and spent 29 years rising in the ranks of the Postal Service. I had a good life in Chicago. I moved into the Rosenwald Apartments in 1930. I lived there with my mother for the remainder of our lives. I had a lot of interesting friends. Many lived at the Rosenwald Apartments. It was the residence of some of Chicago's up and coming African American musicians and artists. I also managed to maintain acquaintances with several former students I had taught at Sumner High School. But the most flamboyant of my friends was another person who had grown up in La Crosse. 
Lillian Davenport. After graduation, she had moved to Chicago and had been a music teacher. But she decided to spend most of her adult life as a musician in vaudeville and the nightclub circuit. George Pope did not seek fame, but instead chose anonymity in his later life. He passed away quietly on April 11, 1962, at the age of 81. He was buried in an unmarked grave. There was no obituary. In 2015, a stone was placed on Pogue's gravesite with the quote, of matchless swiftness, but a silent pace. He paved the way for many who would follow. In addition to his athletic achievements, he was also an academic scholar who spoke four languages fluently. George Polk was certainly a groundbreaker and Polk Park is a tribute to his legacy.